What's up, nerds? We're your hosts. I am Chad. And I am Jake. This is our weekly podcast where we explore the world of nerd from TV, movies, games, comics, news, and books. We will give you our opinions, theories, and oftentimes spoilers. We will also have friends and experts as guests on the show to elaborate further on those topics. But be prepared. We like to have a few drinks, so buckle up. If you want to support our show, like, share, and subscribe wherever you enjoy your podcasts. You can also become a premium subscriber over at buymeacoffee.com slash allthingsnerd. So let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Nerd. Welcome, nerds, to the All Things Nerd Podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. Chad, I hope you had a good week. I almost did it. I'm not going to. Uh, Chad, I hope you had a good week. Uh, but let's jump into our first topic. But first, cheers. Cheers. Uh. So let's kick off this episode uh, with Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the finale, episode eight. Mm. This show was so fucking good. So it picks up on the beach exactly where the cliffhanger from the last episode was. And you get a couple of flashbacks of Percy talking with Luke about how you know, the the gods have to follow the rules. You know, they have to play by their own rules, but that's where the demigods or the half-bloods really have an advantage because they don't have to. But it was really cool because Percy challenges Ares to single combat, which you would mm-hmm. think, dumb idea. You're a 12-year-old who learned how to swing a sword six months ago, and you're going yeah. to challenge the god of war? Good luck, bud. But yeah, how does it go, Jake? Well, I so I thought in that uh, in that scene because oh, they fight each other and it doesn't go great for Percy right away. Um, but then he summons his Aquaman forces and uh, Aquaman. But I, I honestly thought that it was his dad coming to help him. I thought his like his dad was going to show up and be like, no. <laughs> uh, that's not what happened. Uh, Percy um, uses his Poseidon powers, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> to fucking just... It sounds weird when you phrase it that way. <laughs> his Poseidon powers. His Poseidon powers. To, to make Ares super wet. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Starting off strong. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really good. And then he... It was uh, the the tournament or tournament or fight was supposed to be whoever draws first blood wins. And uh, Percy gets him in the back of the leg um, and wins, which is pretty cool. Yeah. For, like, a kid. <clears throat> do to the god of war yeah it it was cool because you know it was single combat so so if aries could all you single ladies anybody could have but if you have like a significant other you're not allowed to fight (laughs) oh you're dumb sometimes (laughs) i'm hilarious all the time yeah you make dumb jokes sometimes, but they're funny. I make hilarious jokes <laughs> all the time. So stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was... First off, it was really cool to actually see when Ares just gets, you know, cut and he bleeds gold. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just looked really cool. And the 
I thought it looked cool. I thought it it reminded me of like Twilight with like the glitter, you know. Oh. I'm a mon I'm a monster. <laughs> and then show them, show then... them sparkle. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh yeah, so he's like bleeding and it was just like gold glitter was coming out of him and I was like, oh. Well, you just made me enjoy it a little bit less. Thank you. <laughs> Side hole of your sex tape. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, for introducing that to my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was uh, really... I mean, it was really awesome, but also very sad and heartbreaking was we got to see Lance Reddick uh, for the last time on screen. And it was such a small like not role obviously the role was huge but it was such a small like moment not even moment what do you mean? What do I mean? Like scene. It was scene. It was such a small scene. Hi. The problem (laughs) is yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, you're doing great. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Remember, was... I was like, I think I'm not drunk enough for this, and uh, I think it all just hit me, <laughs> like right now. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> but yes, Lance Reddick, we love you. And I don't know how they're going to recast for Zeus. I mean. Because even though, it, like you said, it was a small moment, scene, mm-hmm. role, not role. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> since it, it, like, it wasn't a lot of screen time, but he was so like commanding and mm-hmm. like prominent in the scene. Like he, which was cool he, because you dude, could like feel they... that he was powerful just by watching. And I really like that because they uh, in. A lot of, like, if you watch, like, Hercules, like, the cartoon version, like, Zeus is, like, this lovable, like, sad figure. <laughs> but in in actual Greek mythology, Zeus is an asshole. Yeah, asshole. asshole. <laughs> he's an ass. Let me, just let me check your assholes. <laughs> and he's <laughs> popping off on he's... everybody's assholes. <laughs> in each other's assholes <laughs> <laughs> but he's an asshole uh big time and uh i so it was kind of nice to see that he that they did that instead of like making him like this like huggable lovable you know teddy bear i'm russell crow <laughs> yeah uh it was and then and then percy's dad does show up because zeus was about to kill him about to kill percy um and and uh his Poseidon shows up and like does like the old uh nah don't do that. You know? Yeah. Um well, and it took me the entire season to realize who Percy's dad was or where I recognized him from. Oh my god, please tell me because I didn't look it up and it was <laughs> I, bothering me because I, it was like just a little bit bothering me because I wasn't like obviously I didn't care enough to look it up I was like I know him from somewhere and I was like wow and uh and I was like it'll come to me eventually uh he's uh Netflix is um lost in space he's the dad that's probably why I didn't actually watch lost in space oh it's really good you should watch it <laughs> It'll go on the list. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Um, also yeah. kind of crazy because he looks very... has a lot of the very similar like looks to how they cast Poseidon in the show as how they cast him in the live... like the, the film movie. Who plays him in the film? I don't remember. Uh, he was on Grey's Anatomy forever. I don't remember the actor's name. Um... But yeah, like they they look quite similar. I think I already know who it is. It's that big freaking uh like German dude. 
Is he German? Like, I th I don't know. That's that <laughs> was. I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> a bit assumptive. No, not Olympians. You dumb dumb. The movie. I want to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I I do know exactly who you're talking about. He was in. Uh, Oh, he was in a stupid movie with uh, uh, Dempsey. What's his name? Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey and... Uh... God damn it. Was it a Grey's Anatomy movie? <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. No. It was like the... the it was like a brides, the Bridesmaid or something like that where... Oh, it was a I, I think I, I a think I know what you're talking about, but I never saw it. But yeah. Um. Anyways. Hey, <laughs> Hello. Back Off to topic. What we're talking about. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, as the episode, it it doesn't have as like big of an ending. As you'd expect a show to have, you know, it kind of wraps up in like the midway point of the episode and then kind of sets up for season two, which is pretty sweet. It is, it is who I thought it was. His name is Kevin McKid. Oh, uh, <laughs> Kevin yeah, I... McKid. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Uh. Okay. Sorry. And even, like, the final showdown uh, between Percy and Luke, you know, it wasn't as big and cinematic as they did in the movie. I'm sure it's much well, more it's accurate. Got, to... It's got time to build. Because in the movie, uh, Luke gets the, sh the shoes from the, what do you call them? Who's the shoe guy with the wings on it? That almost dragged uh, uh, Grover into the pit. Hermes, his Hermes. Father? Yeah, yeah. In uh, in the movie, Luke wears those shoes while fighting Percy. Yeah, but that was to get the bolt to then bring mm. to Zeus. Yeah. So I literally screamed at every episode. I was like, "He's the bad guy." He's the bad guy. I know every time. It was him. <laughs> every was time him. he shows up, I was like, <laughs> how do you not suspect this dude? Yeah. He's giving you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, he's so likable, though. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but we do see that he got his, uh, Percy got his mother out of Hades, which is cool. Did he? I don't know. Did he? So I had this like sneaking feeling this at the end of Inception again. This is the top. I had a feeling at the end of it that it is not the way. Like, so basically, at the end of the show, the end of the season is this like big happy ending, and uh, not the way that you know. Um, but there is, <laughs> love you. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm drunk. Uh, <laughs> is the just kidding about loving me or about being mean? <laughs> Pick one. Um, <laughs> I said pick one. You could have picked it the nice one. You could have picked it the nice one. <laughs> okay, Mario, keep going. Anyways, uh, there's, like, this happy ending that seems a little too happy to me. I feel like maybe he didn't escape, and he and his mom are both still trapped there. Only because I never read the books. So, here, like, any of our listeners, whatever... That have read the books, please correct me, uh, because I don't know anything other than the Logan Lerman uh, movies. Uh, but in the movies, like there's 
like an interaction between Hades and Rosario Dawson's character in Persephone. Yeah, uh, in the underworld where they like have like a big showdown, and that never happened in this show. So I'm like, did he get her out, or is there like something else going on that we just don't know yet? Yeah, I don't know. But also, what was funny is that his stepdad just gets turned to stone. Yeah. Do you think, uh, way half the time, well, not really, but do you think Percy's mom is hot? Um, yes. Okay, cool. Me too. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh. Ooh I am and for real. real. Never. Oh, was, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna fit, continue on with those lyrics in the song, partially for copyright reasons. Okay, we did not license mm. that song. Can't go more mm. than sixteen seconds. Title of your sex tape. Oh, um, yeah, I f- <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Babe, <laughs> isn't she asleep? <laughs> You're just no, like yelling she's through the up house. On the... I'll actually laugh if she actually comes down here. <laughs> uh, like what oh i was just kidding sorry babe <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> anyways uh everyone should watch this show um before season two comes out i think i'm i'm not a young read, adult read anymore books. but i think i'm gonna have to i also want to read the um Maze Runner books as well. Because I oh. hear that the uh, books in the movies are just nothing alike, and I'm very curious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> well, one thing that you don't have to be curious about is if you are looking for an energy drink that has zero calories, zero sugar, and zero crash, you don't have to look any further than raise energy drinks. If energy drinks aren't your thing, but you still like some supplements, protein-packed desserts, things like that, um, they have it all, including some plant-based options. So listen up, learn how to save 15%. We'll be right back with you with a little bit of trivia. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance-enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description for to get a 50 dollar sample pack for free all you do is you cover the cost of shipping again make sure you use promo code nerd podcast at checkout to let them know that we sent you all right we are going to continue our <laughs> sorry it was just you said something looked at me waited for a response just dead silence then you're like okay (laughs) that's what broke me i'm sorry (laughs) we're gonna continue this uh new thing we're doing this trivia um which seems to be going really well so uh, also before we get into the question because this week you're asking me a question Mm -hmm. if our listeners want to try and stump us send in your question first off anything anything nerdy yeah Um, but also who you want to ask it of, if you want to ask for, for Jake to answer it, you know, find, find 
us on Instagram. That's probably yeah. the easiest way because you can get to both of our profiles from yeah. our podcast uh, that way and send us the question. It's the only way to make sure that we're not cheating. Like, if you want to ask me a question, send it to Chad. Yeah. Uh, if you want to ask Chad a question, send it to me. And that way... Especially if you want to, just because I keep up on our, our email a little bit more than Jake does. So, don't just send it to our email. One of us yeah. will see it. Yeah. And it might not be the right person. Anyways... <laughs> We love okay. you. Let's get into the question. This is the question <coughs> this week. This is for Chad. All right, ready? Yeah. <clears throat> These two characters once used a force dyad, 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 to seek immortality and unlock the full power of the dark side. However, their attempt failed despite their extensive research and experiments into manipulating midi chlorians to mm -hmm. cheat death who are the two star wars characters and if you need me to okay th yeah that's why so, did i say those words right i don't know about the the dyad or dyad mm -hmm. uh it's midi chlorians you yeah, said it you midi chlorians just... yeah i said that one yeah. right um oh do you want me to read it again well uh from what i heard and then i guess correct me is that these two people used uh like a dyad or dyad i don't even know what it would be um to find immortality by unlocking the full potential of the dark side um by manipulating midi chlorians mm-hmm to cheat death. <clears throat> but they had extensive research and Basically other... Basically, they Lord Voldemorted. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is... Ooh. See, originally what I was thinking was... Um, I don't remember what the, the device was called, but I don't think that this is it because it wasn't intended to unlock the full potential of the dark side. But Ezra Bridger and Darth Maul. Well, that's your guess? No, that that's where I first went, and then you said to cheat death and unlock the full potential. So I want to go um, Darth Plagueis and... Uh, Oh my god. Uh Dart and Tyrannus. Plagueis and Tyrannus? Uh Darth Plagueis is one of them, but the other one is wrong. Oh. And wait, Darth Plagueis. <clears throat> Palpatine? Uh which I thought that they were the same person. Yeah. Darth Plagueis and Sheev Palpatine, also known as as the Emperor. Nope. Darth. Sidious. Sidious. Oh, my God. Tyrannus was his first apprentice. God damn That's it. That's amazing, because I don't know who the fuck Darth Plagueis is. That's why I was like, I don't know if Chad's going to get this one. You See, got half of it. That's pretty good. Well, I said Palpatine. Uh, when you said that it was not Tyrannus, so it, yeah. it took me a second. But think the the opera scene in Episode Three when uh, Palpatine is sitting next to Anakin. He's like, "Have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? You know, he was so powerful in the Force he could even prevent his loved ones from dying." That's Darth Plagueis, who was his master. <clears throat> nice work, bud. That that was challenging because my mind went in a couple different ways for a little while. No, oh. I wouldn't have got that. One. I got very like warm, like trying to like <laughs> think through this. Yeah, this oh, question was brought to our listeners by Marty over at Digicat Tech. I don't know if he likes being called Marty. We'll have to talk to him about it. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry. His <laughs> name is 
he it's my cousin. His name is Martel, mm -hmm. or uh, technically his name is Vanud. Martel, I won't say his whole name on here because yeah. I don't know if he wants me to. But I have been calling him Marty uh, for years. <laughs> That's um, how I address him too because of you. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe as a um, way to get under his skin, but it kind of caught Ooh. on because some of my cousins also kind of call him Marty now, and it's kind of funny. So, uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mister Digicat Tech. <laughs> like I said, I don't know if he dislikes or likes uh, that I do that. I just have been doing it, and he's never been like. Dude, stop calling me that. You know what I mean? Dude, like, stop. So I don't. Know. Yeah, dude, stop. <laughs> so, uh, so man, yeah. I'll keep calling him Marty because. Yeah, <laughs> your your family. <laughs> <laughs> I should call him by a preferred name. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have to ask him what that is, because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 all right again for our listeners this was a, a much more challenging uh trivia question um if you want to try and stump us by all means send in your trivia questions you know a couple of sentences as as a hint um send it to either jake or myself depending on who you want to have answer the questions and uh you know, we'll filter through them, and if yours is picked, we'll give you a shout-out. And if you stump us, we'll send you some some sort of swag. Haven't decided what it is yet, but you'll get something from us. Yeah. On that note, let's transition into some nerd news. Ooh, we got a lot of nerd news. Uh, this first one's a bit sad. but Let's start, I was going to say, let's start sad and go happy, because I don't want to end on sad. Well, we're going to uh, come back to talk about this one a little bit more for our second segment, so let's yeah. just mention it. Yeah. But uh Carl Weathers, aka Apollo Creed, um aka aka Chubbs, uh, aka 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 Winnie the Bish. Uh <laughs> hmm. passed away yesterday. Um the official statement right now is that he passed at the age of 76 um, in his sleep, peacefully. <coughs> uh, we don't know if there is an illness tied to this or not. Um, hopefully not. I hate to see... Carl Weathers has been in my life since I can remember. Uh, I used to watch the Rocky movies with my dad and my brother when I was a kid. Um... Happy Gilmore in my teen years, yeah. uh, into my adulthood with Mandalorian. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. He's been, he's been there, and uh, I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, Almost and fifty I, years of. No, I'm only thirty. Uh, no, but of for his whole <laughs> career. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> it's incredible. It is a uh, very sad. It's a huge loss. Uh, Predator, if you guys have ever seen Predator, if you haven't, check it out. It's a cheesy horror movie with Arnold and uh, Carl Weathers. Um, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Predator hair and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, fucking A, man. Uh, this is a huge loss. It's very sad. I'm a big... I've, I really am a big fan. Like, I don't know... We I don't think we ever like talk about Carl Weathers outside of like Mandalorian, but since I can remember, I've been watching his movies. Like yeah, so this is a big one for me. It's it's sad. Love you, dude. Thank you for your art and your talent, and you know I hope you're you know doing better. Know. Yeah. Rest in I easy. Really, Rest I don't in... really believe in an afterlife, so I'm yeah. like, I didn't know how to end that. <laughs> it's like, I hope you're... Well, oh, shit. Yeah. His, yeah. His memory will, will carry on, and his work will continue yeah. to bring joy to people for years to come. I mean... Much better. You the, did it better. The original it better, yeah. Rocky films still are enjoyable. Hell yeah. Decades later, so... Hell yeah. It'll be there. Oh. <sighs> To, to not uh, dwell on 
Contrast. On death. Um, Contrast. Yeah. According and uh, confirmed by James Gunn for his DCU whatever, um, (laughs) we have an official casting for our Supergirl. And I'm really excited about this one. It's me. Surprise, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm fucking famous now. Yeah. Uh, I just got to dye my hair. Cut, cut my yeah, legs let's, off at the let's knees. stop there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Millie Alcock has been cast to be Supergirl. Yeah. Which is exciting. If you don't recognize that name, either you're a new listener to our show and have been living under a rock for a while. Um, but she was uh, the the lead for the first part of House of the Dragon. She's the younger version of... Is it Reyna or Rhaenyra? Reyna. Oh, no. Re- uh, Reyna, oh. Reyna Targaryen? Rhaenyris? Rhaenyris? Yeah, this is... Rhaenyris? Where... Rhaenar? Ragnar. <laughs> wow, that did not help. Thank you for. Sweet. That Anyways, IMDb. it's the super blonde-haired girl from Rhaenyra. House of the Dragon. Rhaenyra, yeah, the young Sorry. version of her. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been cast as um Supergirl, which is dope. Um, I do want to mention <laughs> a joke that I made to you, and I just funny we'll see how this uh, plays over <laughs> yeah it'll be fine it's uh fine. i'm fine <laughs> i'm fine <laughs> james gunn uh posted something saying that he watched house of the dragon and knew right away that this was the edge that he needed for uh the superman legacy movie with uh supergirl and I texted Chad and said, incest, the edge we need for DC. (laughs) For those of you that haven't watched House of the Dragon, that's a big underlying plot point throughout the entire show. Not that Millie Hellcock is involved in incest in any way. That's not the joke we're making. It's a caveat. Sorry for killing your joke. But some people are dumb and just yeah. won't catch that. Yeah. But yes, incest. The edge James Gunn needs. <laughs> Every time. Sometimes I'll like scroll back through like our old messages to be like, what did I miss for like nerd news this week? Or what did I breeze past? Yeah. And like two or three times this week I've seen that message and every time I'm like <laughs> Jokes aside jokes aside. Uh, Millie Alcock, how you feel about it? Supergirl? I, I like it. I think that's a I good like casting. I, I think that, well, We already know no... she can rock the fucking blonde hair. Yeah, we, so, and we yeah. know, that, like, and she's just gorgeous. And gorgeous. she can, even in those few episodes, because the first season of House of the Dragon covers, like, multiple decades, mm-hmm. right? But in just a few episodes we saw like how dynamic her acting can be mm-hmm. i'm stoked on this i think it's a fantastic casting yeah i do too let's talk about this just while we're on this topic real quick i know we probably wrote it down the later other in the james gun yeah, yeah. thing let's just for the for sake of like while we're at, so we're not bouncing around a yeah. little bit continuity so get it so uh, there's a little bit of uh, backlash happening right now. Uh, Chad and I have talked about a lot of weird stuff going on with James <coughs> Gunn's uh, not just casting, but kind of a lot of casting uh, uh, decisions with the DCU. Uh, one of the big things, there's a couple, there's a couple directors who have spoken out about this. And they have said that it's weird that James Gunn, who's not the director of these movies, he's like the Kevin Feige of these. He, Kevin Feige is I mean, like he the, is directing a couple of them, but he's not going to direct every single one. Yeah, 
Uh, they think it's weird that James Gunn is. Uh, he's the one hiring. Uh, the actors and actresses for these movies when normally, it would be the director that would hire. Uh, actors and actresses. Yeah, or having on... an entire casting department yeah. like Marvel does. Yeah. Like is So it's James It's strange that James Gunn is like this is who is going to be in this movie whether you like it or not and that director whether they have chemistry with that person or not has to direct to that person. And I'm not saying that Millie Alcock and uh whoever the director would be for these movies wouldn't have chemistry. Well, for Superman I'm... Legacy, it is James Gunn. But is he the director for? He's doing he's doing that one because it's like his passion project, I guess. Super passionate by, you know, hiring your brother and your best friend and your wife. and Wife, yeah. No, it's like a home movie, you know? Like, <clears throat> But anyways, yeah, it's um, there's a little bit of backlash about it. Like, why would the director not be uh, involved in this? Yeah, that's I find that very strange. Um, and what happens if you know someone is cast for like a, a future role, like say the role of Batman, right? Like James Gunn is like you're Batman, and then when that movie comes along. The, the director and that actor don't get along, but they haven't already shown up in something else. You know, it's like their first appearance, like... But it's been known for months because James Gunn loves to, to tweet and post and stuff like that. And now either do you fire the director so that you can keep the person that you personally handpicked, or do you recast and then, like... That's why that there's casting directors, casting departments, why directors should have a say in the direction of the films that they're hired to do. Well, is it, what if there's no chemistry? You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like the way the way I put it is like for I won't say what company I work for, even though most people who like follow this like know who I or, work for. But no, it would be you, like my you, boss, because I'm a manager at my at my location. It'd be like my boss hiring somebody and being like, hey, whether you like it or not, this person is going to work for you. And then me and that person maybe don't get along, and I'm like, okay, this person isn't working out, but I can't fire that person because my boss hired that person. Yeah. That, that's weird. It's a weird thing to do. It It creates a weird power dynamic that... Yeah. I don't think we've really seen. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that it's happened in the past, but we just don't know about it. But it it gives like the actors like inflated power and weight, yeah. and it diminishes the director. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, we're not actually in this industry. You know, we're not directors. We're not producers. We're not actors. We're a couple of dudes that like to talk shit on the internet for a podcast. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but We're fans first. So exactly. It's just uh, it's a we it's a weird thing because whatever. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I I am excited about the casting. I like James Gunn. I really want these movies to do really well. I honestly do. I know that I have been outspoken about like fuck this because i was really butthurt about henry cavill um because like he was Closer. just perfect i mean he still is but he was like the perfect superman yeah. he's still he's still perfect as a human being uh mm-hmm. an actor but <laughs> yeah but uh i was a little butthurt about it and I kind of shit on this for a little while, but now I'm kind of like, I'm still shitting on it, but for different reasons. Cause it, it, it is taking a weird direction. I think a little bit, but I, I have faith that James Gunn is going <clears> to <throat> make good movies and hopefully. Cause 
I mean, he does. That That's the thing that's so frustrating, is he makes enjoyable films. Yeah. But his, like, persona for the public, you're like... Talk about the party, talk about the party. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Like, you have to be a massive twat to have people that you work with throw a fuck you party in your honor. Which is exactly what happened. Was that uh, for the first Guardians? Uh, no, I think it was the most recent one. Or for Guardian. Okay. Um, but someone that co-wrote the movie with him and didn't get the credit that they deserved. Zero credit. He zero completely... Cre- they were not included her, yeah. at all in any sort of credits, anything. So they threw a fuck James Gunn party. Invited everyone but James Gunn. Most people showed up. Except for like his wife and probably his brother. And Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Fillion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like That's you, wild. You have to be a special kind of uh, narcissist to let that happen. Uh, like, I'm not saying... I don't know the guy. I'm just saying if... I've never... I've been an asshole in my life. And to my knowledge, nobody has ever thrown a fuck Jake party... <sighs> Don't tell yeah. him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you have to be, like, a really big dickhead to get a party thrown f- not yeah. really for you, but for being an asshole. Like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Let's throw a party and be like, fuck this guy. And that's like, the name of your party. An infamous type of person. Like, yeah. you can be a dick to a handful of people. And they'll, you know, they'll voice their concerns in their little, like, group chat or when they're all hanging out. But to get an entire fucking party? Jesus. Yeah. We got a lot to get through. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just we looked just... at it and I was like, holy fuck, we're only on the second top. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically second and fourth. Um, but, but this ties into the last one, so. Yeah. Uh, so, let's talk about. Something that could still be DC related, um, about uh, it's a want, but I don't know if it'll happen. Wants and rumor. It probably yeah. won't. Matthew Vaughn, unless Netflix gets uh, can buy out the Snyderverse stuff. It's not not looking good. No, it's really but not. But Matthew Vaughn uh, wants to make a Kingdom Come. Uh, Superman movie with Henry Cavill, which would be an aged out Superman, and not necessarily a good guy. Um, which he does come around. If you know anything about the Kingdom Come uh, comics, is that he's not a good guy, uh, but he does come around and does the right thing in the end. But I think that would be fucking dope. Will it happen? Probably not. Probably not. And also one of those directors that talked shit about James Gunn um, uh, uh, hiring people without the directors being involved was Matt <laughs> <Yvonne. laughs> mm. I love him. I know that you don't like <laughs> a handful of his movies, like the Kingsman films. I've I just thought them. they were... Yeah, it's whatever. Sorry, I, I mean, care. they're based on like a graphic novel so that's probably why they're a little campy um but yeah speaking of uh people well i don't know why i said speaking of uh but dakota johnson who is set to be the madam of madam web uh she fired her agents <clears throat> Very, very recently. Over... <laughs> Before the movie has even come out. Because of the movie. Do you think do you think it's going to be good? So not good. Oh, then why did she fire her? 
Yeah. Uh, it's my guess is that they pressured her into it and they're like, yeah, but like Sony, Spider Man, mm, this is a great opportunity. And then she probably had a terrible experience making the movie. It makes no sense. It doesn't seem like it's very true to any sort of the comic source material. And then the trailer came out and everyone's like, <laughs> dumb. And she's like, this was a mistake. Y'all are You're fired. Fi You're fired. <laughs> You're fired. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, anyways, yeah, the movie hasn't even come out. Uh, it's finished. And she just fired her agent because of this movie. The movie comes out in 11 not, days. Which does not really give a lot of uh, hope for this movie to be any good reassurance yeah no yeah. nothing uh also i sent this to you the the uh people who made this movie, all four writers and creators of this movie are the same people who did morbius it's morbid time and morbius was a hot garbage trash fire yeah hot, it was just the hot worst garbage. fucking movie the only good thing that i'll say about morbius is that he looked cool when he wasn't flying and leaving a purple trail behind him. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, that can be the same for, for Venom. Like the Venom films. Yeah. I, Looks you know how I feel about Venom. Awesome. Yeah. Not great movies. No. At all. No. <sighs> so that's where we're at. Thanks, Sony, for only making... How, how does Sony get... Into the, I'm sorry, I'm going to go off for a second. How does Sony get into the Spider-Verse so fucking right and then get everything else Spider-Man so fucking wrong? Oh, How? It's a very, 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 very simple explanation. Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. I was like, what do you mean? But... What do you mean? Now I get it, yeah. It is the Sony Pictures Cinematic Universe of Spider-Man characters. First off, fuck your branding. Yeah. Stop. Just stop. Animated, they can use all the spider people that they want. They can't make their own Spider-Man films without Marvel's oversight. Because that's the deal that they came to. Good decision, by the way. But that means... But they still own the rights to the pantheon of Spider-Man rogue characters. So they're like, we know. We're going to make a bunch of movies setting up all these villains. But we're going to make these bad guys super likable. So that when they have to face off against a real hero, you're going to be conflicted. Um, and then they all sucked. And people were like, please, please stop. I hope. It's the plat it, It's the duck-billed human baby from South Park just being like, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> the rumor is, is that the uh, Spider-Man movies with Tom Holland will clash with these movies uh, sooner than we think and i'm hoping i'm hoping that he just because they're working on the sinister six movie now um with these characters and I'm they've been hoping working that... on a sinister six movie since andrew garfield garfield yeah yeah but uh i just whatever anyways um sony cannot be left alone to <laughs> do the the side movies either and like why stick with the doing... animated ones where you doing... can explore the spider-verse and why are we doing the villain movies making the villains good guys show the villains being villains if you want to make a villain movie about a villain a spider-man villain don't make them likable make, them the piece of shit. make it like a horror movie make them like a fucking dexter and just make them like like the center point Psychotic. of the 
Yeah, make them the center point. Go for it. Yeah, I'm all for that. But make them a bad person. I and mean, they're like, uh, oh, let's make this person super likable. <clears throat> and they're like, you know, oh, my God. And they tell jokes. And you, like You've said like, this since day one of this podcast that you love a villain who thinks they're a bad guy. Or who no, thinks, thinks that they're, they're a good, good guy. guy. Good guy. But they are intrinsically evil. That's what makes a make, good villain. Make a that good villain story. thinks they are. This is my Lex Luthor. This is my favorite <laughs> fucking uh, whatever. What like point to make is that Lex Luthor thinks he's the good guy. He thinks he's protecting the world from Superman, and it's the other way around. And I I think that a good villain thinks they're a good guy, but they're bad to the bone. And that's what we need. We don't want likable, fucking cuddly Tom Hardy. Okay, I want a fucking gruesome, fucking badass Venom that just murders people for the fun of it. Venom is not a likable character in the comics, the cartoons, any iteration of Venom until fucking Sony was like, let's make a Venom movie. And now we have three movies of a fucking teddy bear. There was that still like the, off of people. In the comics, there's still what in the, the cartoons, like the bigger jaws moments where Venom was like, let's set aside our differences for now, but yeah. then I'm gonna bite your head off. But those were few and far between. Yeah. It was not a oh, I wanna protect this and get some tater tots and chicky nuggies <laughs> afterwards. Is like, no, like, no. Eddie Brock, without the symbiote, is an asshole. Asshole. He's an asshole. He's an asshole. <laughs> uh, so pairing him with the symbiote, that's why the symbiote and Eddie Brock work so well together, is that Eddie Brock is a fucking douchebag. Mm-hmm. So in the comics... That's why the symbiote and him work so well together. In the movies, they're trying to make Eddie Brock is like this nice guy who's like not trying to be like a whatever, but the symbiote is also this like likable, like funny guy. It's like a rom com. It's like, stop, you fucks. They're both assholes. They're assholes. Like, stop trying to make them so likable. They're both assholes. And then when they get together, they're super asshole. That's the point of Venom. And it's like, now, like you said, when they do bring in Spider-Man and they eventually, hopefully, fight, it's going to be like, who are, who, who are we rooting for here? Yeah. Because they tried to make this guy like this nice guy, and now spider Man's just going to beat the Everling piss out of him, hopefully. But, like, come on. You guys yeah, are it's... fucking Sony sucks. You suck, Sony. Do better. And if you it's can't. You if can't. it's Spider Man related, if it is Marvel character related, at the very least, you have the expenses because of what Marvel has done for you with fucking Spider Man. Um to where you could, I don't know, bring in a fucking consultant or an executive producer from Marvel. And they can be like, <laughs> No, don't do that. You're dumb. We're going to have to watch. We're going to have to go to Madam Web together. I th- yeah. Oh, my God. To... Hell, yeah. Yeah. And then it really doesn't leave. And then I'm moving on because we have a couple more topics to get through. But it really doesn't leave a lot of hope for Craven. There wasn't a lot of hope for Craven to begin with. I mean, I like the idea... I like the character. I love the character in the yeah, comic. He the cartoons, just everything gets like bitten and, or like. Aaron, a... And Aaron Taylor Johnson, love him. I love. I love Aaron Taylor Johnson, and and uh, and he looks somewhat the part. Um, I personally think that uh, Momoa Jason would've Momoa would have been way better. Agreed, um, but but uh, I'll take ATJ. Um, I mean, he bulked up, which was appreciated. He bulked up when he was, like, 18, and he just stayed bulked up. 
Uh, yeah, he just like slowly <laughs> kept getting a shorter neck and wider <laughs> shoulders, you know. Just but uh, I just um, there's just not a lot of hope there. But let's move on. We shit on Sony for a little while here. Yeah, very sorry. I will give them. I will give them the Spider Verse movies, the best Spider Man movies ever. I've ever seen. Yeah, I've ever perfection. seen perfection. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, well, since we have. We had covered in the past, uh, you know, Jonathan Majors being outed as from the Kang role um, because of everything that that happened. Do so, do so. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to get into that today. We kind of covered it in the past, but um, you know, we had thrown around a couple of people that we wouldn't mind seeing be the the recasted Kang. Um, right now, the rumor is John David Washington, which was There's not... There's two rumors. Uh, oh, what's his name? Domingo? Uh, uh, Coleman Domingo? Yeah. Yes. Him and John David Washington are the top names that I keep seeing and hearing. I like both of those a yeah. lot. Coleman Domingo think... is... <clears throat> Also, just an incredible, likable person. And he's no offense to John David Washington. He's just uh, Jonathan Majors is a big guy. Owen Domingo is also a big guy. John David Washington is like five seven, maybe five eight or oh, something is like he that. He's, that short? Yeah, he's a little guy. Oh, he's buddy. a little guy. <laughs> Not in a mean way. Not in a mean way. I'm just no, saying. No, we love our short kings. Like, yeah, get you short king, you know. But, <coughs> uh, oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. He's five nine. Yeah, he's a little guy. Uh, so Coleman Domingo, I think, would, in my opinion, uh, uh, yeah. My. Plus, I didn't know. Until that video I sent you the other day. I had no idea he was gay. No. And I had that zero... story was so Dude. That was seriously. so fucking cute. Yeah. Of oh how God, he met yeah. his husband. Yeah. Uh, They've been together for nineteen <laughs> years. That's crazy. Yeah. They I had no fucking clue. Yeah. Yeah. This now feels terrible because you brought that up. As to why I think that John David Washington would be a better fit. Um, and it's strictly age. I don't, but I don't know what, what Marvel has planned for the future of Kang, how long Kang is going to last, if it's going to be a reoccurring thing even after Secret Wars. But Coleman Domingo is pushing 55, and John David Washington's Seriously? 35. Or 39. He does not look it. Yeah, he's 54. Good for you, bro. Oh, yeah. I mean, he looks fucking fantastic. He does not look that old. Not that that's yeah. that old, but. Wow. Black don't crack, bro. Glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, and I was like, I'm the white one on the show. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> um, We're moving on. Uh,. We got a teaser trailer for Sonic 3. Um, the only thing we really get from it is, like, the label or the whatever, Sonic. Yeah, the title like screen. Symbol. But you do hear Jim Carrey uh, as Robotnik laughing, and it is confirmed that Jim Carrey is returning as Dr. Robotnik, which, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. There's also a couple of bigger names that are still that are confirmed to be in this but are not tied to characters yet i'm gonna go from six to midnight <laughs> kind of um <laughs> i'm gonna start with uh christo fernandez who you would know as danny roja from ted, ted lasso. lasso football is life Football is life. Uh, and then he killed the Greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave him the yips for like six months. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Kristen Ritter. Mm -hmm. Love her. You know, Breaking Bad, Jessica Jones. 
Jessica Jones. Uh, the B in Apartment 203 or whatever it is. Don't uh, trust the B in Apartment like something 23. Ah, yeah. yeah. uh, B, yeah, whatever. She's uh, confirmed to be in it. And then the big one is uh, Daddy Vader himself, uh, Hayden Christensen. Yeah. I heard that. I don't think that one's confirmed, but I heard it. Uh, he's confirmed in it, but still unnamed. Like, Noise. But everyone is saying they hope that he is uh, Shadow. Nice. Okay. Should be... Uh... <clears throat> This other, all right. The other one, this one, we've been talking about since the, since they announced it. Uh, the official casting for how to the live action How to Train Your Dragon has been released. Uh, we got Julian Dennison. Uh, you know him from Deadpool Two. Uh, he's Firestarter or whatever the fuck his name is. Fire um, Firefist. Firefist. Yeah. Is that what it's it was? Just, it's just a spicy fisting. Fire you know? fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Gerard Butler is reprising his role as Stoic. And then Mason Thames playing Hiccup. Uh, Mason Thames is from uh, Black Phone. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's an awesome horror movie. Um, yeah. Uh, and then Nico Parker as Astrid. Nico Parker played um, uh, Megan Jules from The Last of Us. Joel's daughter. I don't know what her name was in the last. Sarah. Place, but why did I say Megan? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sarah. His daughter that gets gunned down uh, in the episode beginning. Episode one, of, unfortunately. Yeah. Episode one. Uh, dude, I. If Nick I'm Frost. fucking stoked about this, I think it's gonna be yeah. really good. I showed Chad uh, earlier today, before we started uh, podcasting, a uh, video of Toothless on set. Uh, and they are going for a more Jurassic Park kind yeah. of a uh, practical they're, effects. They're not using. I mean, I'm sure there'll be a level of CGI to this. Um, obviously, they can't make a fake dragon fly, so it's going to be whatever. But they or like a, rolling around, you know. It's a giant, fucking like robotic dragon that they're using, and it looks so good. It, we should post it on our site so that people can see it uh the video that i sent you if you if you can do that then, yeah i will uh yeah. the the one that you sent me i'll try and see if i can save it and then repost it It looks so good and i love the practical effects uh over cgi i think it's oh it I looks mean, so hot and i love and i love how to train your dragon it's my favorite cartoon franchise ever well ooh, that's sec it's seconded now by um uh, across the Spider Verse, well, into the Spider Verse. I would yeah. say it's. I'm just gonna say top five. It yeah. it changes based on my mood, but it's yeah. always up there, especially the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Oh, Jonesy. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And uh, from, I think it was the third uh, animated one where one day away. I don't know if that's what it's actually called. I don't know. I've it's been used across. It's still Jonesy, right? I think so. I think Jonesy did yeah. a lot. They did all three of the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so hot. I love these movies, dude. It's fucking hot. Speaking of hot, like <laughs> the hottest. Uh, <laughs> uh, sponsor number two. Uh, Crybaby Craig's hot sauce. It's a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes on practically anything. Listen up. We'll tell you more about it. Hey, you nerds. Do you love spice? Supporting small businesses? What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. 
Okay, friends, so we're going to wrap up this episode, but before we do close out, we want to talk about our honorable mentions. Jake, what you got for us this week? Um, As I mentioned last week, I have been watching <coughs> Masters of the Air with um, Austin Butler and Barry Keoghan um, and other people, obviously, but uh, and I'm still really liking it. I'm I'm sailing this show. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's, it's not really a nerdy list. topic, which is the only reason we're not like talking about it, talking about it. Uh, but it is really fucking good. Let it cook. The first episode's a little slow, but it gets really fucking good. Um, the other thing that I am watching right now, uh, Nicole and I started watching True Detective season four. Uh, the nice thing about the True Detective series is that no season has anything to do with the other season. They're one-off seasons, um, and it is creepy this season is. I bet their wild. final season, they all intertwine. No. no I, I would be really mad there's, to know that that happened. There is but... <laughs> no fucking way that that could happen. No. I'm sorry for no. interrupting. This, <laughs> there's you, no. You were saying this uh, this season is creepy so far. It's creepy. It's got like a... They're making it seem like there's a super... Na- the, the previous three seasons have been like gritty cop, like... Uh, cops like taking down serial killers or like a mafia family or something like that and, and they've, they've been, been like period pieces right like you yeah know, like the they've been 70s really, really the good. 80s no 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 no. they're set in real time yeah, yeah. oh they are yeah so the the first season uh and the third season i guess the second season is the only one that didn't do it they bounce back and forth so the first season is oh. woody harrelson and matthew mcconaughey um and it takes place in the past, uh, but then there are like parts of it that are in the future, so they don't end up solving the case until their future like selves. Oh. Um, but the second season doesn't do that at all, which is really cool. And then the third season kind of goes back to that. It's uh, Marshala Ali and Stephen Dorff who played um, Stephen Deacon Frost. Wow, and yeah, played, yeah. Uh, it, and it does that back and forth <clears throat> thing again. So then um, season this... two is the one with Vince Vaughn. Yep, Vince Vaughn, uh, Colin Farrell, uh, Rachel McAdams. I need to watch um, this fucking show. Yeah. I, it, I have not all, watched All the any seasons of them. are fantastic. Uh, plus, if you're a degenerate like myself and yourself, uh, the first season, uh, uh, Alexandra Daddario gets totally naked a lot. Um, hmm. Which ties into our uh, um, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Percy Jackson. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, the fourth season, I've been watching it right now. It's Jodie Foster. Um, and I don't know the other, the other actress's name. But it is playing on a supernatural kind of a feel to it. Um, I don't think it actually is supernatural. But they're definitely giving up that vibe this season, which is so far from the past three seasons. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I just finished the third episode the other night, and it was creepy. It actually legitimately creeped creeped me out. So that's what I'm watching. How about you, Chad? Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to. I haven't watched the show, so I can't. I was trying to pull up that actress's name, but uh, I don't know who it is. Um, Let's see if I can do it. <clears throat> so, um, just because we're we're a month away, uh, I decided to rewatch Dune uh, Part One this week. I also finished up watching all the the Godzilla Kong connected things but i've talked about that you know for the past couple weeks so uh rewatch dune part one forgot how incredible that movie is uh the soundtrack everything about it just love it 
got me really excited for next month because it's like March 5th, March 3rd. <clears throat> Her name is either Kali or Kaylee um, Reese. Okay. I haven't seen her in anything else. Anyways, keep going. Uh, Sorry. Oh, March 1st. Wow. I'm so good at time. Uh, March, 1st March 1st is 1st. when Dune Part 2 comes out. Ooh, I'm fucking stoked for that, dude. Yeah. So I just rewatched Part 1. Loved it again. Just so good. That is one thing, because the, the first part came out during the pandemic, so I didn't go to the movie theater to see it. You know, I watched it at home because they released it directly, you know, to stream. And I'm, I'm so excited when part two comes out, whether you and I, Jake, if we go together or not. I think so. Um... It has to be on the monster screen, IMAX. I don't care if I. I have think to drive. it's only. I think they exclusively are releasing it only on the IMAX screen. Well, they booked out uh, so that nothing else can be released on IMAX or shown <laughs> on the IMAX in theaters during that time. I'm sure that we can see it on a normal screen, but because I didn't get to. Well, why would you? Yeah, because I didn't get to experience the first part in theaters, so I want to IMAX. Just have to. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I've been watching is uh, I started watching Griselda on Netflix. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's from the, the people that brought us Narcos. Um, but it is a... a Sofia Vergara. No. Did I? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Here you go. I'm sorry. I was confusing her with uh, someone else for a second. Um, She's, she leaves Colombia from the, the Mayadine cartel, which is Pablo Escobar. And then she creates her own drug crime empire in Miami. I'm an episode and a half in. I am fucking hooked. Because... Did you watch Narcos? I didn't finish Narcos. But what's really interesting is... uh, At the start of this show... There is a quote from Pablo Escobar... That says... I only ever feared one man, and it was a woman, Griselda Blanco. So, like, this is going to be fucking intense. The first episode was insane. You know, beating the shit out of someone with a baseball bat because they stole your drugs. Um, and Also, Just... like, watching someone get stabbed through the back of the head and having the blade of a machete pop out the front of the face. Like, it's bloody, it's gory, fantastic. I know, I heard it too. <laughs> uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm. We'll see how it goes, because this is supposed to be like a one and done uh, season. Um, and then I'll go back to Narcos. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even finish the first season of Narcos? Yeah, I'm almost... I think I got through... I don't think I finished season two. Um, Because I started watching it, and then like a bunch of nerdy other stuff came out, and then ADHD Which is where we're about to be in like a month. We have so much. Which means I gotta get going. Right now, we're like... We're like struggling to like pull shit together. So like we're not struggling. I mean, we can talk. Like I mean, whatever. That's why we allowed ourselves to just like rant and rave during that yeah. nerd news segment. But we have so much nerd shit coming out like mm. in the next like month or two. Like we're gonna be Yeah. Homework is gonna be I love calling it homework. 
I, I say it's cynical. All the By time. calling it homework, you can almost make it a tax write off. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, did I do Nicole's that? Nicole's like, when I uh, did my taxes. I like wake ago? up early yes. in the morning. I'm like, I gotta go do my homework. And she's like, because my homework. <laughs> For those of you that aren't watching us on YouTube, first off, shame on you. Second yeah. off, Jake just shook his head no. <laughs> <laughs> she's not having that, but. She lets me do it anyway because she's awesome. But we have a lot coming out in the next like month or two, and it's gonna well, eleven days from well. the day that we're recording, Madam Web comes out. So we're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a fun time to go see this comedy together. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just... maybe it'll surprise us. We've been surprised before, so I don't want to say it, Shazam. Yeah. So surprised the shit out of us yeah. um yeah. Still black know. adam surprised us i thought black adam was pretty good it was mid it was better than what i expected yeah shazam um, too was bomb though yeah. i i taste the rainbow and, motherfucker <laughs> yeah and i and i don't give a shit about zachary Levi. who gives a shit Levy. whatever the fuck his name is yeah just to show how much i don't care about yeah. him uh yeah Mm. Anyways. Well, if our listeners stuck through all of that, especially the last, like, four minutes of that, um, and would like to support us, the best thing to do is to what, Jake? Give us... Give us your money. Um, (laughs) I knew what you were doing. I know, you were just being a butt. Um, Yeah, uh, the best way to do that is to head over to Buy Me a Coffee... <laughs> buymeacoffee.com slash all things nerd it's a monthly subscription but you get a lot in return member exclusive merch behind the scenes ways to talk to us directly and depending on how much you're willing to give on a monthly basis a chance to be on the show which is pretty sweet if not just head over to all things check out our merch store pick up something there it's a way to give us your money but you still get something out of it also, a shout out to Digicat Tech for our new uh, website and helping us out with some of our digital marketing needs. If you need help in that arena as much as we did and do and will continue to need, reach out to Digicat Tech. Yeah. Check also, out our website and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And we're, yeah. we're working with them to continuously update it blogs everything like that we're also you know just trying to stay on top of things a little bit better also if you are a a fan of tabletop rpgs please check out the kobolds in the basement podcast it's a live play DD podcast that i host other than that we love you all have a good night and cheers this has been the all things nerd podcast